Now let's speak about the characters. Can you describe the characters quickly? Who are the characters in this excerpt? We have Clarissa, uh, Clarissa and uh, and her best friend. Um. Okay. And Who is the best? And Mr. Loveless. Loveless. And that okay. woman. And, and that woman. Who's that woman? <laughs> uh, Mrs. Uh, yes, Morris. Uh, Morris. Mrs. Moore. Yes. Uh, Mrs. Moore. Mrs. Yeah. Moore. Sorry. Okay. So the characters in this excerpt are the following. So Clarissa. Why is Clarissa? Uh, Ahmed. Yeah. She. She is uh, the ideal woman. She uh, is. She, yeah. The, the ideal woman. Okay, uh, Clarissa, who is an ideal woman. Okay. Yes. And, uh, She's virtuous also, Miss. Yes, virtuous. You, uh, and well mannered. Now let's speak about her position in the novel. Why is she? She is protagonist. protagonist. The protagonist. She is the and protagonist. Round, round or flat? Yeah. Round. Uh, round. 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 Why? The main, main round. Yeah. Miss, because she narrates uh, in a letter to her friend what happens to her. Okay. And describe her own uh, emotions. All right. Yes. So this makes her. She is in third position. Now we're not speaking third. about. Uh, we are not speaking uh, about the point of view. Now we're speaking about uh, why she. What makes her a round character? Uh, okay. Because she is always uh, in progress and uh, development in. Uh, in her action and uh, situation. Yes, we sh we see different. We see her in different. Uh, uh, we see the different sides of her personality. We see her happy and anxious at the same time. In this text, uh, she is motivated at one time, and then she is regretful. She feels guilty. She is very lifelike. Okay, so she is a round character because she is lifelike reflects true human feelings. Okay, we can see different sides uh, of her personality. Okay, the different sides of her personality are reflected as she is happy in or rather not happy. She is um, anxious and regretful at moments she becomes ambitious to have a better life in the future overseas and um, she reflects or rather she expresses um, her pessimism, she expresses her pessimism when she talks about her uh, punishment. Okay, she's not static, she, is, she also matures during the, uh, uh, the narration. Okay, even in this excerpt, she does change from the beginning to, to the end. Before this letter, she, she believed in Mr. Lovelace, but now she knows that he is a bad person. Okay, let's speak about the other uh, characters. Uh, Mr. Lovelace is also mentioned in the in the excerpt. So Mr. Lovelace is referred to as what? She used it. She used many words to refer as to as a villain. As a villain. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Lovelace like, as a bad is guy. referred to as a villain and wretch. She uses the words villain. Oops, sorry, villain and wretch to refer to him. 
So, Mr. Lopez is referred to. Uh, sorry? Is Andrade referred to as antagonist? Yes, good. He is the antagonist. And is he round or flat? Round. Is Why round? round? Is round. Why round? Uh, because uh, because uh, he seemed uh, in, at the beginning uh, like handsome and intelligent and a good a good man, and uh, after he tricked uh, Clarissa. Okay, he's a round character, Marily, because he is lifelike too. Okay, Marily, because he uh, he is lifelike on white he's not uh he's not there to represent or to sound anything or any ideology he is a real life um uh, character or person okay because he is lifelike uh you said what did you say ahmed can you repeat yeah uh he was in the beginning uh the handsome and the, the brave man yeah and after he tricked uh, Clarissa. Yeah, he later tricked Clarissa. Okay, the other characters are not truly mentioned or not, they are mentioned by name, but do not truly make uh, a good action here. Maybe there is the, uh, the, um, I know. There's the letter of her cousin Morden, so we can mention cousin Morden because he, uh, she spoke of his action, which is sending a letter in which he is telling her that he has taken uh, her brother's um, side. Her father is mentioned, but just to tell us that she had a father's malediction, but we don't have enough information about these characters. We cannot decide whether they are main character or minor characters. We cannot decide whether they are round or flat. So we're going to stop here with these two characters. Let's move now to the audience. No, not the audience. Uh, the audience actually of this novel are married the 18th century uh, middle class women, or, or particularly uh, young women. Yes? Miss, yes? can I ask a question? Yes. Uh, lovely, so. He didn't change and develop uh, in this passage, in only this passage. He remained the same all along the passage. So why is he a round character? Because he is lifelike. He is not there to sound or to stand for any ideology. He is there to stand for any uh, for an idea. Okay. He is there as a real life person. He is not there just to to sound something or to represent something. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Sorry, there's a lot of echo here, so I would have to deactivate some microphones. Good. So the audience is the 18th century middle class young women okay young women all right now i want you to give me the themes to whom the author is saying what was the theme in this excerpt hurry up Uh, okay, one by one. Let's begin with Rahma. Um, maybe that the uh, appearances are deceiving because she first thought that Lovelace was a good man and uh, finally she realized that he's, uh, he's uh, represents evil. Okay, so appearances are deceiving. All right, let's hear Aya. Uh, yes, uh, purity, because uh, Clarissa was a pure and virtuous woman. She could never surrender to Lovelace or compromise uh, her morals. All right. And Rehan? Uh, the hopeless position of an 
any girl who gives any encouragement to a villain or a bad man. Uh, can you repeat the hopeless position of? Of any girl who gives any encouragement to a bad uh, person. All right, the hopeless of a woman who would give any. Or, what, what did you say? Who would give? Uh, 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 the hopeless position of any girl who mm -hmm. gives any encouragement to a bad person. Right. Any other themes? Did you find any other themes? Anyone else? Miss. Uh, Miss. Uh, honor. Honor could be also uh, can be also uh, a theme uh, for this uh, passage because she, along the the passage she she was uh, fighting to preserve her honor and uh, then she end up by being raped by uh, by uh, Mr. Loveless. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you, uh, Ahmed. Yeah. Yes, Miss. Uh, can I say the rewards uh, of the rationalistic uh, uh, choices and the punishment uh, of uh, emotional wants? Mm, let's write it, write it down and then we'll think about it. Can you repeat the rationalism of? Uh, the rewards. Oh, the reward of rationalism? Yeah. Rationalistic uh, choices. Mm -hmm. And the punishment of emotional wrong. Okay. Now let's have a look at the themes that you provided. So the audience uh, is the 18th century, the audience yes. that is addressed. Or the targeted audience, okay? Targeted audience is the 18th century middle class young women to whom the author is saying that appearances are deceiving, deceiving, which is shown in Lovelace's bad behavior and his greed towards Clarissa which took him and rape to oblige her to marry him okay second uh, another theme is that of purity and honor that of purity and honor through the passage Through the passage, Clarissa shows that she is a virtuous person, very innocent, and that her honor was very important for her. She used the words vanity and vilest dishonor to show her true intentions. Okay, let me fix this. She used the words vanity and vilest dishonor in inverted commas because these were the words that she used um, throughout the text. Next um, themes. The hopeless position of a woman who would give any encouragement to a bad person. Okay. One more message by Richardson is that any woman would give any chance to a bad 
person or who would choose emotion over rationality would have a bad ending. And finally, now your idea hand was good. I just paraphrased it. OK. I need the reward of rationalized choices and the punishment of emotional one. Um, it's the same idea. I think I have uh, fused the two ideas within one, so we can stop here with the themes. Can we now move to the plot? Can anyone explain the plot development? So where does the plot begin? In this case, we have a plot that is narrated not in the time in which it happened, but it's narrated uh, later. The plot is narrated after it happened. OK, can anyone uh, provide the yes, plot? Yes, Miss. Yes? Miss, uh, when Clarissa uh, known the real face of Lovelace, 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 yes. Yes? Yes, I had. That was just a sentence. I need a plot. Where about it? Gusha, if you have nothing to say, please deactivate your microphone because it's making a lot of no extra noises that uh, that are somehow bothering. Okay, anyone else? Do, does anyone have anything to say? Yes, miss. Yes, uh, Yeah, uh, the beginning of the, the plot uh, was uh, when uh, Rosie uh, seduced uh, Clarissa and uh, start starting uh, raising uh, when she escaped uh, with him. Uh, far from her uh, family, and uh, the climax uh, when uh, he uh, raped her, and uh, the following action uh, when she escaped from from him, uh, and still uh, and uh, stay alone. Okay, thank you, Ahmed. But in this excerpt, he didn't rape her. She escaped the rape. He didn't rape her. Okay, so here's how to talk about the plot. Yes. Yes, he only attempted the the, the rape, but he didn't rape her. Okay, so the plot in this excerpt when Loveless plotted the fire and made Clarissa believe there was danger in the house to push her into his arms in the middle of the night. Clarissa was saved. from the right and uh, from the rape from the rape so the point uh, of so the, the climax can be considered the moment in which the fire was in the house okay the plot resolved when Clarissa escaped and hid in Mrs. Moore's in 
Mrs. Moore's house. The plot resolved when Clarissa escaped and hid in Mrs. Moore's house, although she knew it was temporary. It was not the end of the general plot of the novel. Okay, it's important to mention that this was not the end of the general plot of the novel. This was just the plot of the excerpt or the plot that we found in the excerpt. Now we can speak about the point of view. Now, uh, what is the point of view? What is the perspective of the narration? From which perspective is the narration done or conducted? That uh, from the uh, first it is person. The yes. first one. Ahmed, yes? Uh, from the first person point of view. First person point of view, yes. Someone else also wanted to speak? Uh, same thing, Miss. Yes. It is narrated in uh, the first person uh, because Clarissa tells uh, her own story. Very good, okay. The text is narrated from a first person point of view because the incidents happened directly to the speaker Clarissa that she was the one who fought the rape she was the one who was tricked okay uh, is it it's first person is it peripheral or central central because central. Clarissa is the protagonist Very good. okay the point of view is central because the speaker or the narrator Clarissa, is herself the protagonist of the text. Is herself the protagonist. Okay, let's now speak of the settings. I totally forgot the settings. Um, we have, we don't have much. Yes, we do have a, a time settings in the beginning of the letter. What do they refer to? June the 8th, Thursday evening, June the 8th. What is that? Here, here time. Yes. Time setting. Uh, the time, time when place. Clarissa was uh, writing uh, the letter. Very good. Okay. Do not confuse. Always be sure that you know what the time refers to. Because when we are discussing this excerpt, a lot of students think it's the time in which uh, the rape happened. But it's not a reference to the rape. Actually, it is the time uh, in which uh, she, uh, Clarissa wrote the letter that was after the rape. Okay, so time that thing is June eight. Sorry, June the eighth, which is the uh, time in which Clarissa. Oops, that, that's a lot of repetition. The eight. Which Clarissa wrote the letter. Now, she also mentioned the English colonies. Why did she mention the English colonies? Uh, in Miss, uh, where, he, where she was uh, with Mrs. Uh, Moore. Moore. Okay, so I mentioned the English colonies, which is the place uh, she wanted to go to to escape her family and Loveless. We, uh, she also mentioned Hastert. And what does Hastert refer to? Hastert is the place I think where she was hiding at Mrs. Uh, Moore's house. Let's check that. Mrs. Moore, where are you, Mrs. Moore? Yeah, more. Yes, Hampstead, Mrs. Moore's house. Hampstead, where she hid in Mrs. Moore's house. Okay, let's stop here with the time and the place settings. Uh, let's speak now about the diction and the register. We said that the register 
is the kind of language that is used in the text and the diction is the uh, word origin. So let's start with the register. What kind of language is used in the text? It is formal. Yes, yeah, it is it very, is. Formal. very formal. Yeah. Very formal. Okay, the register of the text is very formal since the text was narrated by an 18th century middle or rather high middle class lady. So her language is very elevated. Okay. And the diction. Miss. Yes. Uh, what do we mean by register? Register is a type of the language that is used in the text. It can be formal, informal, it can, can be colloquial, it can be slang, it can be scientific, industrial, um, nature related, it can be religious, uh, political. It depends on the kind or the type of words that are used in the text, okay? The jargon yes. of the text. All right, let's in speak this, about the in this chapter. In this chapter, it is formal or informal because Very we formal. have uh, letters be between two friends. Between two friends, so it's, but it's very formal. She is a woman from the 18th century. They were obliged to use very formal language. And uh, America has asked me earlier about the language. Uh, she said, wh why did she uh, use uh, where to come and uh, where, where he to come, which is a formal expression, OK? Uh, the text is full of very formal expressions. Uh, she is uh, uh, the, the use of the formal words is meant on purpose to show that this is a woman who had a good education. She is very elevated, very uh, elegant, and she has a good education. Okay. Now the diction okay, is mostly Latin origin because of the formal words. Latin origin because of the use of formal language. Now, let's look at the uh, figures of speech. We had already mentioned some figures of speech. We said there is an analogy, there is a simile, um, there is also a, an interrogation. Can you provide more figures of speech so that uh, before we leave? Hello, figures of speech, anyone? Here, this is the text. There are many figures of speech, actually. Miss? Yes? Uh, my guilty impatience. Mm -hmm. uh, isn't it a personification? Okay, let's have a look at it in the text. Guilty. My guilty impatience. Yes, yes, it's a personification. And what do you think she means here? Mm. Oops, sorry, this is not the right document. Yes? Yes, what does she mean? I think that guilty is... Um an adjective uh, of humans. Mm -hmm. So uh, the impatience can be guilty. This is not how you explain a figure of speech. You're supposed to say what the what the speaker actually means by using such a sentence. The no. deep meaning, the true meaning or the literary meaning of the sentence. Guilty impatience refers to what? She's not the only one who has to answer the question. You are all required to answer this question. Come on. Okay, now I want to sleep. You are so silent. You are making me want Miss, to sleep. Miss, I have a... Uh... Yes, uh, one, in which part uh, of figure of speech? Uh, one second, I'll get back to you, Marika. Yes, Ahmed? Uh, in which okay. uh, paragraph, please? Sorry, Ahmed, can we? 
in which uh, paragraph? Because I I don't see here. It's in the last paragraph. Yeah. Uh, thank you. No, it's not the last paragraph. It's the third paragraph from bottom on the second page. Do you see it? It's orange here. Yeah. Forgive me yeah. this memory question, the effect of my impatience, my guilty impatience, I doubt. It's very easy. What do you think she means by saying my guilty impatience? Who is guilty? Uh, loveless. Come on, who is guilty? <laughs> She says, my go team patients. <laughs> yes. Clarissa, who is guilty? Yes. Simply, she means that she feels guilty, okay? Although she's saying my guilty impatience, patients, it's a reference to her own uh, guilt, okay? So there's a personification in guilty impatience in which Clarissa expresses her sense of guilt. That's all. Erika, you had something? Miss, uh, in the paragraph before the two last ones. Yes. Uh, normally we have personification and a simile. Uh, yes. She said, uh, and who knows but that this very path into which my inconsideration has thrown me and strewed me. Mm -hmm. So she used the uh, throne and the strood, uh, which is uh, which are not uh, throne is a human quality. Yes, very good. That's a personification. In, yes, in, in consideration uh, is uh, uh, is not is con <laughs> well, Let's see this. Um, there is. Another personification in my consideration or in consideration through me. Okay. Through me also and through me. All right. As it is with the uh, uh, briars and thrones. All right. As it is with briars and thorns. Here it is a simile. Uh, why do you think that it is oh, that's a simile? Because from we find from the uh, roses and, uh, and they are not uh, with they, they hurt us. Yes, when as it is. Yes, indeed. As it is. Okay, and a simile and shrewd as it is with, with briars. briars and thorns. Yeah. Now you have to explain them. Okay, so what does she mean in the first one? The in first one, uh, the me? author mm -hmm. uh, used uh, the throne, which is a human quality. Uh -huh. to, uh, to to uh, a non-human uh... but be careful you you only described the figure of speech you didn't explain it this is this is not how you explain a figure of speech okay a figure of speech when you explain a figure of speech you are explaining the deep meaning of the sentence what does the sentence in, in consideration through me truly means in this case i'm giving you the answer only because it, we're lacking out of time or we're running out of time otherwise i would leave you uh, i would oblige you to find it okay so uh, in consideration through me here means or rather which means that she was being irresponsible in causing herself the trouble okay this is what it means that is what does the sentence truly mean 
Now, mm -hmm. there is a simile in strewed as it is with briars and thorns. Again, what does she mean by this sentence? Hello? Uh, it is... Uh, uh, she was uh, about to explain the hurt that she hurts herself hurt yes yes by which means that the evils she had to experience were very harmful okay they hurt her badly were very harmful just like thorns okay now let's move to the tone and the atmosphere because we have to finish this so the atmosphere of the text what do you think of the atmosphere of the text the atmosphere is the general feeling around the character if you were clarissa and you were in this situation how do you feel things around you uh fear uh lost yes. and feel in danger so fear loss and, and feel hope in danger. Danger. because of the conditions she had to live in okay now what do you think of the the author if you were the author um what would be what would you think of her what is the tone of the author the tone is a full of sadness and uh, anxiety Mm-hmm. Why anxiety? Uh, because uh, the events uh, that uh, happened to Clarissa, uh, they, they, they were uh, very sad and grave. Do you think that Samuel Richardson was feeling anxious? So the tone is related to the feeling of the author. How does Samuel Richardson feel about her? Oops, sorry. Uh, 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 Clarissa uh, had uh, the right reward. Uh, sorry? Uh, uh, Clarissa had uh, the right uh, reward uh, at the end. Mm. Okay, let's see someone else. What do you think of the town, the others? Yes? Hello. Uh, this may be uh, the, the author uh, made uh, made us angry because he made from Clarissa uh, uh, fight uh, the virtuous woman fighting always to preserve her, her honor mm -hmm. and she lived in hardship and she lost her family. Okay. Uh, support. All right, we know that she, he made her feel guilty for what she did. So we certainly know that he thinks that Clarissa made a mistake. Uh, this shows that the author shows some anger. So there is the tone yeah. includes, okay, the tone includes some anger towards Clarissa. Since the author made her uh, feel guilty about her um, about her deeds, okay? But is there only anger? I don't think there's only anger. He made her survive the rape, and she speaks about vanity and pride, and so she is virtuous, which shows that he is not that angry with her. He does feel some pity for her, okay? He does feel some sympathy over her. So we know that there is also let's say the feeling of um or let's say there is some some um fascination 
about the good manners and good education of Clarissa, who felt proud of her vanity after she escaped the rape. Okay, so you see that the tone is always extracted from the events, from what happens to the character, from the things that the author does to the character. Okay, this is how you uh, you you infer the uh, the um, the uh, sorry the tone. Okay, now let's speak of the conclusion. To conclude, give me one sentence to conclude. Do you say? Come on. All right, I will give you the time to think about the conclusion. Please, uh, as you think about mm -hmm. the conclusion, write it in the conversation uh, panel like we did last time. OK, I will go get back to you mm -hmm. later uh, and see what you wrote in the conclusion. I want you to write it here in the conversation in the general panel. I will see what you wrote as a conclusion. I will put them in the document and I will be uploading the document later uh in uh both in teams and in the facebook group all right so thank you everyone for yeah, attending right. today yes and ahmed yeah thank you so much miss thank you yeah. so thank you everyone for attending today uh next time we're going to analyze a text from frankenstein or modern prometheus okay it's going to be a text from the romantic period and frankenstein is included in the exam because we discussed it in class all right so I will be uploading the text from Frankenstein both here and on Facebook. Please do take the text, prepare the full analysis of the text so that for our next meeting, uh, you would be more interactive with me. OK, and please for next time be interactive. I don't want just only two people to interact. I want everyone to interact. I want to hear your voices. All right, so this was all for today. Uh, see you next time. OK, bye bye. Yeah, Goodbye, Bye. Miss.